Hello, everybody. I'm Tom Fontana from the Ohio Soybean Council. Uh, on behalf of the Ohio Soybean Council Board of Trustees and our 24,000 soybean farmers around the state of Ohio, I'm happy that you're joining us for this virtual field trip. Uh, we are going to be joining Scott Metzger from South Central Ohio, who will go through the planting process and some other uh, uh, things that he does this time of year, and we hope that you will find this educational and informative. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Scott. Scott, thank you for participating. And if you could start out by just introducing yourself and tell us a little bit about your family and your uh, farming operation. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Metzger. I'm a sixth generation grain farmer from uh, South Central Ohio. Uh, I farm with my uh, uncle and two cousins. And uh, today we're planting soybeans. So that's this time of year uh, when, we, when we're busy getting all of our corn and soybeans planted. How, how many acres do you farm, Scott? Uh, we farm about 3,200 acres. We've got uh, roughly Roughly 1,200 acres of corn, 1,500 acres of beans, and 400 acres of uh, wheat are there and about. Um, uh, <clears throat> that's, that's usually about where we're at for crops. Well, I see you're out in the field and you're planting, and you said you're planting soybeans today. How, how does the planter actually work? <laughs> So that's that's the planter back there. The uh the gray uh the gray boxes are on there. We put the soybeans in there and where the uh and I'll get out to you here in a second, but the they basically go out by air through there and go down to the go down to the units that you can see running there and, and uh, they get planted in the ground. I'll I'll stop here shortly and uh we can get out and take a look at it and, and kind of go over things there, how it, how it works. Um, and this, we know till all of our soybeans, that's, that's where you don't work any of the dirt or anything, just uh, plant into it how it is. This is okay. some of the, we're in, a, in about a hundred acre field here. So this is kind of the, the view here where we're at um, in this area. I get down here at the end, Tom, I can get out and kind of kind of walk through things on it. Okay. Um, how, how deep do you plant the seeds? Uh, we're usually uh, we're usually planting them about an inch and a half or two inches deep. And uh, how many seeds do you plant per acre? <laughs> we're, uh, we're dropping in this field, we're dropping the uh, uh, 155,000 is what we're dropping in this field. I'll uh, uh, get out here and we'll walk around, do like a quick tutorial of it, I guess. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's the tractor we're planting with. <laughs> and like I said, in those, in the uh, in the gray boxes on there, we uh, where the beans go. Actually, lift, lift these, put these lids up here, and and uh, put the beans uh, inside there on them. And on the back here, these are all these all these boxes here are called their row units. And what your um, your beans actually come out of the come out of the box up there and go through all these tubes that are here and they go down into the meters and then they <clears throat> go down in between the depth gauge wheels and come out of the seed tube and then go in the ground here and see if we can dig some up and find them here. So right there, right there is where we're about an inch, inch and a half deep, where you want to plant it at. Probably a little bit heavy today, but it's getting late in the year, so it's uh, these <clears throat> much moisture's in the ground. The beans they'll be up in 
they'll be up in seven to eight, nine days. Okay. Oh, so, that that that's about the that's about the depth there where you wanted that. And how how far away are they spaced from each other? Uh, these are probably where we're planting them at now. They're they're a couple inches apart when they come up. Okay. And how uh, how wide are the rows that you plant them in? I'm sorry, ask that again how wide what? The rows that you plant them in. Uh they're they're planted in fifteen inch rows, so they're they're fifteen inches apart. And the planter we're running today it's uh it's a forty foot wide planter. How how long if you keep running does it take you to plant an acre of soybeans? Uh well we usually plant we can usually plant about twenty five acres an hour. Okay. Very good. So uh a question for you, how much does that planter cost? <laughs> uh it, it's around uh around a couple hundred pounds. Okay. And you use it for you use it for how many weeks out of the year? Uh we'll usually use it for uh I guess two or three depending on depending on uh how long the spring takes. Yep. Okay. Uh, as far as your planter is concerned, uh, do you use any computer aided devices when you're planting? So right, that's the that's the monitor that we use right there. Uh, on the the bar graph there, that's showing what we're the population we're planting, and we also are recording. Uh, we use a program called Field Field View where it maps maps all of our field. Uh, that way when we go in there in the fall and we're combining, we can uh, uh, use that technology up there to see how everything yields um, uh, in comparison to where we planted and different varieties and stuff we planted. So what kind of problems have you run into this year as far as planting goes? Uh, actually, not really too much of anything this year. It's been a pretty good smooth spring once we got going. Um, once we uh, kind of got, <clears throat> we had a good bit of rain there in April and kind of got off to a slow start, but May, May's been pretty dry and uh, we've been able to get most everything planted here in about 10 or 12 days. Could you tell us about a year when you had some issues and what they were. Yeah, some uh, usually the the main things you the main things you have to worry about are are uh, obviously if equipment and stuff breaks down, that that's always an issue. Uh, you know, everything we do is uh, it's very timely. Uh, when stuff needs to be planted, it needs to be planted, and probably the biggest thing you can run into if something breaks, um, it just takes time to fix, and and uh, you just have to do it and then roll on. But uh, you know, we're you always, you always fight weather with farming. Uh, you know, it can it can it can be too wet, and then you know, maybe a week, ten days, three weeks later, it can be you know too dry. So it's uh, you kind of always get the extremes with things. But that's that's probably our biggest issue in the spring is uh, in uh, spring planting is, is weather and breakdown. Can you uh, can you tell us? Uh, what the stages are the soybean plant goes through. Right now you're planting. You mentioned that if the weather's right and the moisture's right, you'll see plants fairly quickly. But can you kind of take us through the uh, stages of soybean growth? <laughs> yeah, so we're, so we're starting off, we're uh, obviously planting right now. And, uh, oh, it'll be, um, Two three days, uh, the uh, the soybean will will germinate and um, and and start to grow. That the, the picture up there that would be that would be about an R one right when it right when it starts coming out of the ground. Um, there's actually eight stages to uh, soybeans. Um, R one 
is your uh, beginning bloom. And then you go, uh, go into the flowering part. And once, uh, once you get into full, full flowering, then you, you um, <clears throat> get into the pot development, which is actually where the soybeans themselves are made. And uh, once, once you get beyond that, then, uh, then it, it starts, starts developing the seed inside the pot. And right there's a picture of it when it's flowering. I guess I'm probably going too quick for this, but that's, that's when it's flowering. Right, right there would be the, the pod development stage of it. And then in that, around that time there, that's when it's, that's when you're also, uh, that's when your seed is starting to, starting to form inside the pods. And each pod usually has, usually has three to four beans in it. Occasionally you'll find a, find a five bean one, but everybody's goal is usually to, everybody likes to see four and three is pretty common. And that, that a lot of that just depends on the weather. Um, you know, rain is always a key factor with all the crops. Uh, you don't want it to be too dry or too hot. That limits, that limits, uh, limits how well it'll develop. Once you get, uh, once you get into the fall there, the picture that shows now, that's, that's actually what they look like when we harvest them. And, uh, we generally will harvest in, uh, you know, we usually start cutting beans at the end of September or first of October, but sometimes early September just depends on how the weather is. Um, we plant, soybeans are, um, they've got different maturity groups. We plant, we plant a, a 3-1 to a, to a 3-9 um, soybean maturity group. Uh, the lower the number, the quicker, the quicker it, uh, the quicker it matures. The higher the number, the longer the season bean is on it. So, so how do you know? You, we're what, looking at a picture now of some brown-looking soybeans. How, how do you know when they're ready to harvest? <laughs> well, you'll uh, well, obviously they obviously when they lose all their leaves, uh, you know they'll be green and lush all summer, and then when we get into closer to harvest time, they they drop their uh, they drop their leaves and uh, start to turn brown like that, and we just usually just go out and check them. Uh, we usually cut cut beans between uh, well thirteen and a half percent dry, so we'll you know we'll cut anywhere from from dry up to fifteen sixteen percent beans, and uh, we've we've got technology on our combine that actually just measures measures the moisture as we're harvesting them. So that's other than just, you know, we'll get out and peel some of them out of, take some of them out of the pod and chew on them a little bit. And you can kind of, you can kind to, you can see what, uh, you can tell pretty quick if they're red or not. If they're dry, they'll be real hard. And if they're, if they're wet, they'll be soft and chewy, almost kind of like bubble gum. Hmm. So you mentioned that you plant about 155,000 seeds per acre. Uh huh. Uh, if you have a reasonable soybean harvest, <laughs> or uh, what kind of yield will you have? How many bushels per acre? Uh, we usually aim we uh, a good a good goal is to be in that between that fifty five to sixty range, uh, fifty five to sixty bushels per acre. Um, on a usually a usually good goal, and and a lot of that you know will depend on depend on the kind of weather we have all summer. What, what other are issues are there out there that affect uh, the yield of your soybeans? Diseases, yeah. pests of different types, that sort of thing. Diseases and, pe diseases and pests both are issues. One, one big common disease in this area would be uh, um, Frog eye, brown spot. Those are those are leaf diseases and diseases on the stems, and uh, those those are two big ones that can greatly greatly reduce uh, your soybean yield if you have issues with them. If if you find them in your beans, you have to uh, you have to spray for them to take care of them. Yes, yeah, soybean aphids is is usually if it's hot and dry in the summertime, we'll have some soybean aphid issues. Um, Grasshoppers and bean leaf beetles they'll they'll also chew on them uh, you can you can have a soybean leaf that's 
that's uh, got a lot chewed off of it, and it, it still doesn't hurt the yield as much. You have to have some pretty good defoliation to uh, to really hurt the yield on them. But it's more it, 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 soybean aphids are, are probably some of the worst of the of the bugs that we can have. Um, as far as that part, but the diseases are, are more prevalent issues with beans than, than what the bugs are most years. Uh, another question for you, what kind of seed are you using? Uh, are you using GMO, genetically modified seed? Or uh, yeah, are... all, of, all, of our beans, all of our beans are, uh, well, what we're planting right now are Roundup Ready and, and Dicamba Resistance. Uh, we plant about 350, three to 400 acres of plenish beans, uh, which are, um, they're just Roundup Ready beans, and that's, that's used to make the uh, IOLA healthy oil. Um, but uh, all the beans we plant are all GMOs. And why do you plant GMO beans? <clears throat> well, for us, it's a, it's a economic factor for one thing. It's a, the the genetic the genetics are good. It's we actually use use less chemicals by uh, raising uh, GMO crops. Uh, it's, it's easier to control the weeds, and it's uh, you know, we, it's a it's a safe product, and it's, it, it it works well for us. Very good. Um, at this point, Dan, can, should we turn it over for some questions? Sure, sure. Let's, um, let's go to Worthington Christian. It looks like there are some questions there. There may have been one that came in the chat that they can ask right up here in front of the camera. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> you got this one? No, you got it. Oh. Go ahead. Um, are you guys affected by stink bugs being invasive? I Stink buggy things like that. Yeah, uh, yeah bugs. we have we but there yeah there are issues with stink bugs. Uh, the uh, Ohio State University is doing a lot of research with that right now. Um, they, yeah, they they are they are in the area and uh, they they will affect yield uh, as they do on them. Um, it's it's kind of hit and miss in the areas that they're at. They're they're not everywhere down here. Uh, they seem to be more prevalent around some of the some of the farms we have along the uh, woods and tree lines and stuff like that. They'll they'll show up more there than maybe more in the field like where we're at right now where it's really open. Sure. Um, we have uh, let's do another question there from from Worthington. It looks like there may have been a question about uh, no-till farming. Does somebody want to ask that question? Yeah, it's um, can you explain the benefit of no-till farming? Uh, yeah, so so like I said, well, when we're when we're doing this, we're not we're not disturbing any of the soil, um, uh, <clears throat> soil fertility and and soil health was very important to us. Uh, when you when you go in like this, not disturbing it, you're you're maximizing or you're minim you're minimizing losing any soil moisture that you have, and it's it helps with erosion purposes throughout the year, and it gives um, gives us good organic matter in the soil, which helps with the fertility. We did have a question come in via chat from Chilla Coffee High School. This is a class <laughs> that doesn't have a, a webcam or video, but uh, you may be familiar with the folks there in, in Chilla Coffee there, uh, Scott. But they have a question about what types of pesticides do you use? We usually use. Uh, there's there's two types that we well it's it's all one pesticide. Uh, <clears throat> the name of it's uh, tombstone or sniper are the uh, are the pesticides that we use, and it's uh, usually <clears throat> usually there in the in the summertime when you're when you're uh, when the pod when the beans just starting to pod. Uh, if you do have insect pressure with with uh, soybean aphids, stink bugs, or uh, it, it really any pest is giving you problems. That's that's when we will go out and uh, when we spray pesticides, and it's um, usually used uh, 
12 to 13 ounces per acre. So that's like taking a, uh, she took a, took, took a can of pop and basically spread it across the football field. That's about how much uh, pesticide that you're actually putting on an acre ground. And you run that with, you run that with water. M most of what you're spraying is water. It's got very little chemical in it. However, it is, it, it is very effective. You don't have to use very much of it to work for it to work. Very good. We do have some folks from uh, Lima with us as well. So Lima West Middle School. Do you guys have any questions you wanna you wanna share with us here to ask Scott? We're not hearing your microphone at the moment there. <clears throat> you might have to type that in the chat for us if we can't get your microphone to work there. So feel free to to type that in there and, and let us know. Um, while we're waiting for the question to come in from, from Lima, we can go back to uh, Worthington Christian. Are there more questions from Worthington Christian? I was discussing with the kids that in, on the uh, no-till farming, it helps with the carbon cycle too, to keep that carbon locked in the soil so that it reduces on your pollution. And the benefit of you have much lower use of pesticides and those um, like the weed killers and such uh, with the use of GMO seeds. Yeah, that is, that's true, yeah. Great, and we did have the question there from Lima West Middle School come in. They say, what is the ideal temperature for planting? I know we, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of discussions, you know, farmers want to get out in the fields early if they can and, and you know, we got to say to the soil has to warm up, the soil has to warm up. So so where does that have to be, Scott? Can you take us through your, your process, your thought process when it comes to planting? When is the right time to get out there and do it? You know, we, we like for the soil temperature to be above 50 degrees when we plant. Um, it takes, uh, if, you're in that, uh, if you're in that 50 to 60 degree, 60 degree range with their soil temperatures, uh, that, that's ideal for getting your, getting your soybean to, uh, to germinate relatively quickly. At, at those temperatures, you're looking at, you know, a lot of times they'll take it maybe maybe two weeks, um, two two and a half weeks before it comes up out of the ground. Uh, now you get these warmer temperatures, uh, like you and I were talking uh, there earlier. You know, it, it's in the mid 80s here right now during the day, and and overnight we're only dropping down to you know 70 72 degrees. So as much moisture as we've got in the ground right now, it's uh, you know the by tomorrow morning, these soybeans will be swelled up, and two days later, they'll be sprouted, and probably in another three days, they'll be up out of the ground, popping up. Uh, the, the first uh, trifoliate leaves will be popping up out of the ground. So it's, it's uh, you know, we we like it, it. We like to at least be above 50 degrees when we're planting corn and soybeans, both uh, the soil temperature. One question I have for you, Scott, going along with that is what happens if you plant them and maybe it, it gets too cold all of a sudden or it, it rains too much? What what type of, of factors do you have to deal with there when it comes to the weather after it's in the ground? Yeah, you, usually uh, usually in that case, uh, and, that, and that, that would have happened last year, we had there, uh, I don't know, the second or third week of April, April whenever we started rolling pretty hard there, uh, we got a bunch of corn and beans planted there in one week, and we got like a four-inch rain on it, on everything, and it got down into the into the low 30s at night and was only in the 40s during the day. And we actually had to replant all the beans last year that we had planted during that time, just because they combination of them not coming up and they just rotted. Uh, the ground crusted over and the the uh, uh, they were they were breaking off the the uh, cod lead was breaking off as it was coming up out of the out of the ground and and when that happens you know the, the bean is dead. Um, the a soybean the growing point for a soybean uh, when it comes up out of the ground is actually out of the ground the whole time unlike corn. Um, so if you have cold temperatures if you get down in the upper twenties low thirties. Uh, with soybeans and they're they're the growing points up out of the ground you've got a pretty good risk of losing them uh due to frost or freeze damage so it's it's uh everybody wants to wants to get out and run pretty hard but you have to uh you have to make sure the soil soil conditions are right uh for planting otherwise you're just wasting your time mm -hmm. and losing money <laughs> 
right? So Worthington Christian has a very interesting question here. I think they've noticed that nobody's hands are on the steering wheel. Is that correct? What are you guys seeing? Yeah, so I, I'm. Uh, I've got the, I've got the auto steer here set now, so it's it's just basically driving itself. Uh, the only time we have to touch the steering wheel is when we turn on the end. So, it's uh, if you're sitting out here for for 12, 14, 16 hours, it's uh, at the end of the day you're much more you're you're not quite as worn out as what you are as if you are doing steering. <laughs> So how does that work, Scott? Do you have to, you just set it and forget it, or do you have to set it at the end of every row? How do, how do you do no, that? So, so when I went down through there before, I just, uh, I just, I'll just show you here real quick. Let me turn here. I don't even see the screen there, but that's over here. You set your, you hit that and it hits, uh, comes up to set a although we're not gonna set a new line, but where those where those red lines are on the screen there, if you can see that, that's that's where we make our where we make our A V line at. So when we when we take off you'll see the the uh tractor will actually steer towards that red line. And that's that's when when you're on the red line that's when you're that's when you're lined up with it there. Sorry, it's probably wobbly. And, you, and Scott, you set this all up ahead of time you have all the fields mapped with gps and so forth right yeah uh, yeah we well when we come into the field we actually we actually will set it up then um on it uh just set the a b lines but yeah all of our fields and stuff are loaded in loaded in all of our uh all of our software that we're using here are so you using are you using variable rate technology well Yes, we are, but we haven't been able to. Uh, we're having trouble with it this spring. That's what when we're running our running it through our iPad here. We this was actually one of the fields we were going to variable rate, but we can't get the prescriptions to connect between the iPad and the and the Pro 700 of the monitor here. So we're actually not variable rating in this field, but but that but we we normally would be. Can you explain what variable rate means for folks that are? Uh, yeah, so so by that by that uh, by variable rating that we will set a we will set a prescription up and as we go across the field here, uh, you'll have various different soil types. So in your better soil types, we'll, we would generally put on less soybeans per acre. And when you get into some of your uh, some of your heavier clay soils, um, it we it would increase the um, plant per acre that you're planting. And this, uh, when you set those prescriptions up, it just does it automatically. Um, do we have any other questions from um, Lima West, who's who's with us here? Any other questions from there? If you have them, feel free to type them in since we can't hear you there on our end. And it says, um, why are you planting soybeans in a field that had corn in it before? Uh, well, my, my, in our operation, we, we always, uh, we rotate all the crops around, and uh, if we follow soybeans after corn, um, and then usually corn gets planted in the soybean stubble or wheat stubble, and then uh, our, our wheat our wheat gets planted in the bean stubble. Uh, it's, it's just the rotation we use. Um, we, we don't we don't do we, we just we do very little corn after corn, and uh, that's we just. Plant, plant it after plant it after corn it, it, it helps with the helps break up the disease cycle between crops uh, is, is one of the main things and then it's it's um, as far as yield benefits it's it's good to plant it after corn it, it's just it's for the fertility reasons it's, it's better to do it that way Lima Scott, there was a question from Lima West they want to know how old are the seeds that you're planting uh, they they would be uh, these seeds would have been harvested in the fall. They would have been planted last year in the spring, and then uh, harvested and cleaned over winter. So they would be be roughly a year old. Very good. 
We did have one more question pop in there from Worthington Christian. It says, how many years of data do you have for your field? Do you keep your data for how long? Yeah, yeah, we, we keep uh, we keep the data for every every field. And uh, we, we've got some, uh, we probably got some that's probably close to 15 years probably worth of it. Uh, between between yield maps and soil fertility. What do you use that for? Uh, just that we the the yield map uh, they they obviously help us in our seed selection from year to year. Um, you know some some varieties will yield well and some won't. Uh, you know we obviously want to pick the varieties that are that are consistent. Uh, we don't you know you always want to have the highest yield possible, but you uh, you want to have consistency as well, and as as far as the soil fertility stuff, um, our soil soil fertility data, um, that's you know that that helps that that's what makes our crops grow is the fertility. So you want to, your your uh, your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium levels to be up up where they need to be, as well as all your micronutrients. But this time, uh, we appreciate everybody participating in today's virtual field tour <laughs> with Scott Metzger. We hope, we hope you le uh, learned a lot today and you understand more about soybean farming than you did before you uh, visited us uh, virtually. So thank you all for uh, participating. Ohio soybean farmers appreciate your participation. If you want to learn more about soybean farming and agriculture, go to our educational website, grownextgen.org. That's grownextgen.org, and you'll find uh, all kinds of materials and resources there to use in the classroom and elsewhere. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Scott. Thank you.